Look where Pence just showed up on a Harley to piss every liberal off in America, he's not messing around, Vice President Mike Pence just showed up at an Iowa rally in style on Saturday. Vice President Mike Pence who fully supports President Donald Trump on his decision to withdraw the United States from the Paris Accord on climate change in order to make good on his campaign promises to boost the U.S. economy, showed up at an Iowa rally riding his Harley-Davidson motorcycle. No biggie, former President Barack Hussein Obama did the same once. They look like twins. When Vice President Pence spoke at the rally in Boone, Iowa yesterday he said President Trump will carry out the main promise of his campaign. To cut taxes and to repeal President Barack Hussein Obama's Obamacare. Pence also went on to say that Trump's controversial decision to pull out of the Paris climate deal made it very clear to all Americans that he cares more about Des Moines than he does about Denmark. This is the meaning of America first. Most of us haven't seen anything even close to this during our lifetimes. A president who actually puts American interest above any other two-bit third world cesspools. What a beautiful thing to see and to be able to say I voted for that. Makes me proud to be an American again. Of course, my loony liberal home state of California doesn't agree, President Trump may be quitting the Paris Accord on climate change but forcing the rest of the nation to go along with him is proving more of a challenge. Led by California, dozens of states and cities across the country responded Friday to Trump's attack on the worldwide agreement by vowing to fulfill the U.S. commitment without Washington a goal that is not out of reach. The defiance is a signal to the world that the political forces behind America's climate fight aim to outmaneuver this White House and to resume the nation's leadership role when Trump changes jobs or changes his mind. The pushback also reflects how far most of the country including many Republican parts already have moved in transitioning to cleaner energy, even as Trump works to slow that momentum. The American government may have pulled out of the agreement, but the American people remain committed to it and we will meet our targets, former New York Mayor Michael R. Bloomberg, a special envoy for cities and climate change to the United Nations said Friday after meeting in Paris with French President Emmanuel Macron and Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo. It will be a heavy lift. States and cities would need to meet a pledge to reduce America's greenhouse gas emissions to 26% below 2005 levels by 2025, America's self-declared target under the deal. Even with buy-in from the federal government, there were doubts about hitting that non-binding target. Trump has made it a lot more complicated by spurning the accord but not impossible. California, the nation's leader in emissions reduction, has already joined with New York and Washington state to build an alliance of states that will guide the nation to Paris compliance in the absence of leadership from the federal government. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti is leading cities in a parallel effort that already has enlisted 150 members. Cities and states are already where most of the action on climate is, Garcetti said Friday. Our message is clear to the world, Americans are with you, even if the White House isn't. Trump's move is going to have unintended consequences of us all doing the opposite of what the president wants. It will in many ways greatly backfire. Garcetti estimated that 70% to 80% of the work on reducing emissions is happening at the state and local level, regardless of federal policy. That includes renewable energy mandates set by utility commissions, fuel mileage standards and efficiency rules for appliances. While mayors and governors can't sign on to the Paris Agreement only heads of state can do that they can prove effective shadow participants. Many of them have forged close relationships with the key climate players in other countries over the years, signing their own climate pacts abroad and participating in various capacities in landmark climate negotiations such as those that took place in Paris and Kyoto, Japan. Bloomberg, a billionaire philanthropist, has already pledged to cover the $15 million the U.S. is reneging on by personally paying into the operations fund of the UN agency overseeing the Paris Accord. He announced Friday that he would officially inform the UN that the U.S. will meet its emissions obligations, noting it is already halfway there thanks to better fuel economy standards the shale gas revolution and more renewable energy sources and is positioned to step up its efforts without any help from Washington. None of this is new for California. It was amid the climate inaction of President George W. Bush's administration that the state passed AB 32, one of the world's most aggressive climate change laws at the time. 
Decades before that, California imposed vehicle emissions standards before the federal government had any. In recent years, many other states have begun to compete with California in the race to reduce emissions. We have more rivals, if you will, with other states stepping up to act in this area, said Mary Nichols, the state's top climate change regulator. Now the success of the renegade effort to bring the U.S. in compliance with the Paris Accord will probably hinge on how much further California can push the nation. Even there, the Trump White House is angling to insert itself. It is threatening to block California from implementing aggressive new fuel mileage standards. If the White House successfully follows through, that could jeopardize the ability of states and cities to meet the Paris Climate Action Commitments, according to Michael Wara, a professor of energy law at Stanford University. Vehicles account for more than a third of greenhouse gas emissions, and California has unique authority under the law to set mileage standards higher than the federal government's. Under the Clean Air Act, other states can adopt those standards, and several have. The other massive source of greenhouse gases is power plants, and in that sector the U.S. continues to cut emissions significantly without the federal government. Wara said natural gas prices had dropped so low that most states would probably meet the targets the Obama administration set for them through the clean power plan the signature federal climate action Trump has ordered dismantled. Prices for solar and wind power are also plunging leading to their proliferation even in states that are not aggressively mandating their use. Experts caution that without the backstop of a federal commitment to Paris, the momentum could slow and the goal of defiantly meeting initial pledges in the accord could drift out of reach. An increase in natural gas prices or the price of solar panels, or a further drop in the cost of gasoline at the pump, could throw things off. I have no doubt we can achieve a lot, said Jody Freeman who advised former President Obama on climate change. But it is challenging to match what would have been possible staying in Paris. Many politicians are trying. Among them is Bill Peduto, the mayor of Pittsburgh a city that Trump has said repeatedly he is putting ahead of Paris in his rebuke of the accord. On the eve of Trump's planned Pittsburgh not Paris march on Saturday, Peduto announced a pledge to move his city to 100% renewable energy by 2035. Trump's misguided decision to withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement does not reflect the values of our city, said Peduto, a Democrat. We can't afford this. We are already in a huge debt that Silicon Valley won't bail us out from again. We have the most poverty in the nation, and not because people don't make enough. We make more here than in most the rest of the country. But since everything is so taxed and regulated no one can afford to live here. In fact, in recent studies, it was discovered that only 30% of us who live in California can actually afford to live here. Our housing prices are ridiculous, our energy prices are even worse, and don't even get me started on what our roads look like. Sometimes I mistake our freeways for Baghdad roads. Although I think taxpayers already paid to fix Iraq roads. Because you know, nation building. Please share if you know climate change is only a scheme to put America last. Please do not forget like on videos and subscribe and comment because your voice matters and visit our page on Facebook and like them and follow up. And thanks for watching.